Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mono Black Discard. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. We are going to be testing out a little bit of a Mono Black Discard build here. This is one that I've kind of thrown together. Literally this morning, I was like, man, I just really feel like playing Discard. I actually looked at the channel. We haven't played a dedicated Discard deck uh, since Crimson Valve, which is kind of ridiculous because it is a very strong deck in the meta, uh, just in general, uh, at least from my understanding. I don't play, I, I think it would be a little bit better in traditional maybe I, I'm not sure but regardless I thought I would try it here uh, at heart this is a mono black control deck you'll see a lot of basic control elements that you normally would see blood chiefs thirst meat hook massacre uh, we do have inscription of ruin which kind of plays multiple roles here it gives us a, a way of discarding cards it gives us a way of returning uh, in particular elder fang disciple if we needed to or uh, giving us a kill spell uh, which is quite nice. We can do all of them as well, which is also very good. We do have Hagra Mauling as well. Uh, and then the Invoke Despairs I thought would be a really nice touch with this, along with Blood on the Snow. So we really do have a fairly strong removal package, so I'm not terribly worried about onboard presence. I think we can handle that for the most part. Uh, Professor Onyx is also in here as a way to kind of uh, help that process as well. Um, long of the short of it, though, is I kind of just wanted to see what we could do testing out a bunch of different cards. I've noticed in looking at a lot of discard decks, there's a different skews of which spells get used some run duress some run dredge fuse some run go blanks not all of them it's there's a lot of like back and forth and so i'm kind of testing out all of them and so as we're going through this just know that this deck is very much a test deck i'm just trying some stuff out here so please don't get too terribly upset if you try this and you're like ah oh, this isn't very good i will say in practice i've practiced two games so far uh, I, I was able to win both of them uh, fairly handily as well. It was relatively easy. This is a relatively aggressive discard deck. Uh, we've got a lot of really nice early game spells. One of the things that I wanted to do was have nice little two for ones in the creatures, which is why Graveyard Trespasser is the absolute perfect card. Not only does this come down and immediately exile something, but to actually deal with it uh, in a non sweeper capacity, just like a one for one capacity, they are going to have to discard a card. Uh, which is really nice and what I've learned uh, and what I'm kind of liking and actually leaning more towards is putting more extract the truths in the deck uh, and potentially leaning a little bit away from duress or maybe some dredge features that I'm not 100% sure I need more that can like target the hand we get to see the entire hand and then we can know hey if we drop this graveyard trespasser they're gonna have to use an infernal grasp and discard a card and they don't have a sweeper available. Uh, that has happened uh, in one of the test games and it was a phenomenal uh, play. It worked really, really well. Uh, I've also realized Go Blank, I do think is a very big necessity right now. Um, a lot of the graveyard stuff is very active. Uh, Reanimator strategies, even just some stuff that's like returning one or two cards. Uh, a lot of the is it decks, uh, Leer decks, things like that. So having this as a way to just immediately exile the graveyard is like awesome uh super super good we do have agadim's awakening mostly to bring back the disciple plus the trespasser we don't have a one drop of course but it is an extra land as well so it just gives us a little bit of that extra kind of umph uh, that we might need. And then in the top end, we do have Turgrid to really capitalize on some of the discard. Of course, we can utilize the Lantern as well. In the second practice game, I was able to steal multiple permanents just by having Turgrid out and them not having cards in hand. So they were kind of forced into a position where they had to sacrifice stuff. We were able uh, to, to bring it back. And it was it was pretty awesome honestly they field have ruined uh, a hive of the eye tyrant and then i was able to just take the field of ruin <laughs> it was pretty great um the the rest of the deck though is very focused on planeswalkers so the idea is that the early game is very focused on the discard uh and then the later game is very focused on planeswalkers and then invoke to spare blood on the snow so we're seeing a lot of different meldings of a lot of different mono black control decks, uh, whether that be discard, true control, planeswalker control, invoke despair control, all of them kind of shoved into one deck here. We're testing. 
Again, please take this with a grain of salt. I don't want anybody to get too upset if this is like ridiculous and all over the place. I'm not saying this is a good final deck. I just wanted to see what we could do uh, just throwing some test cards in here and, and seeing where we came up. So this is my own creation. So berate it in the comments if you'd like, it's fine. Uh, but I just wanted to see what we could do, guys. I think it's gonna be an interesting one. Let's jump in. Let's see uh, if we can get some wins with this. I think it'll be fun. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. and. Uh, uh, yeah, this is actually a really easy keep. So we've got Elderfang Disciple into Graveyard Trespasser. Again, what I was talking about in the deck tech, I would kind of rather have uh, like an Extract the Truth here or even a Duress just to be able to see what the opponent is up to. Uh, that gives us a lot more information to better play that Graveyard Trespasser. But again, I think this will be fine. We are definitely going to keep. Because we've got so many lands as well, I'm going to keep that Hagger Mauling. Having that extra removal spell, you just never know. That could very well be an important piece here. Uh, it does look like Orzov Snow, so I'm assuming that they're going to have some really, uh, really scary stuff here, but we'll make the best of it. I am going to go ahead and play the Hive as well, just to get that active sooner. And then we'll get a card out of hand here with the uh, Elder Fang Disciple. What I have realized is in playing discard, a lot of people get really upset <laughs> against discard, which makes complete sense. Uh, but I know, you know, some people really, really hate it. So I'm curious to see how this uh, actually works out. Okay. Um, so we have some options this upcoming turn here, then we can... I'm not going to block. I'm going to let that hit. Um... We've got some really interesting options. So we can just Graveyard Trespasser, which is perfectly reasonable. Alternatively, um, we can Blood Chief's Thirst one of these, uh, or Hagra Mauling this while it's still kind of an active play. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to take the opportunity to Hagra Mauling this. I'm expecting they will have a basic at some point, uh, and so I'm leaving this up on blocks because, again, we're not trying to be aggressive, and I'm very glad we did the Hagger Mauling now that we see that. Um, I think I will take the block now. Uh, they're probably just going to deadly dispute this. Yeah, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I'm glad we at least blocked, saved ourselves a damage at the very least, and we'll see what they come up with here. Uh, maybe nothing, maybe something, maybe just draw a card. Um, curious. They may have a Vanishing Verse just to get rid of the Disciple. Not that that's a great use of a, of a <laughs> Vanishing Verse, honestly, but that's another thing with the Elder Fang Disciple. I really like it because it's immediately a one-for-one, one, right? Like, they immediately have to discard a card. Really great option for that. Um, but what's really, I think, funnier is that eventually they, of course, are going to deal with it. Now, that might just be a Meat Hook Massacre, but sometimes it's not, and uh, it's a little bit funny. All right, let's go ahead and do this. We'll see what they do. Um, let's go ahead and get the creature out of there just so we can gain an extra life. Um, all right, so we're two mana away from Professor Onyx, which we do have that mana in hand, which is great. Hopefully they don't have a sweeper. Again, this is where an Extract the Truth or Duress even would be great because I would love to know what's in their hand. But yeah, there's the Meat Hook Massacre. Perfectly fine. Don't love that, of course, but I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, and a Loth is the draw. Well, I do really like Loth, so let's go that route. Um, let's go ahead and drop these tutus. And again, this is where the Planeswalker side of it is starting to take over, at least hopefully for the long term going to take over, where we can start playing some of these big Planeswalker threats. Uh, and, you know, we didn't get to discard as much as maybe we'd like to in this game. But the idea being that by the time we play these, hopefully they're a little bit lower on the, uh, the totem pole for, uh, the, uh, the cards in hand. Interesting. Go blank, huh? So we can see the truth, or extract the truth, wow, and then go blank. I think I'd rather Professor Onyx first, though. Uh, the reason being, obviously, that Magecraft is pretty awesome if we can get it. Um, do we take the blood on the snow, or do we take the inscription? I think it's actually the inscription. As much as I don't want to lose the blood on the snow. I'm also not going to attack here. They do have the Reckoner Bankbuster if they play just anything. So, um, you know, creature with 
creature value three power is able to crew this, and so it's not a very long stretch to assume that they can do it. Looks like they're not going to be able to here, though, which is pretty awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a snow lamp. All right. Um, well, let's do this. Ooh, I do really like Invoke Despair here. Um, so that would hit this and the enchantment. Uh, that would give us a pretty good safe-ish attack. Uh, alternatively, we could try and hit multiple things. I kind of like, here's the thing. I kind of want to do the safer play, which I think is the extract the truth. Um, we just get a chance to look at their hand here. Ooh, they've got farewells. Oh, well, that's less than ideal. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and force them to discard two more. So basically, their play is going to be exiling creatures and planeswalkers, I assume. Uh, with that in mind, I'm just going to draw a card. Uh, this is actually kind of a tricky one. So lands allow us to invoke, dis let's see, four, five, six, seven. So five and then six, seven. Um, nah, I'll take this. This is going to be a lot trickier for them to deal with very soon. So um, I think this is a little bit easier to, uh, to make. I think I can safely attack with one, and then if they don't block, it's great. All right, cool. They're going to farewell this turn, I assume. Uh, they do need to hit a land, I suppose. They could Doomscar, maybe? I don't know. I wasn't really looking at their lands, but they are behind on lands, which is kind of interesting. So obviously, we just block here, and then they're not going to deadly dispute. Okay. Uh, cool. That's fine. Um, choose up to two non-land permanents. Return. You control to return to their owner's hand. I mean, these two. Okay. Uh, that was fine. That was interesting. Uh, I don't know that that was a great play, but I'm super into it. Uh, okay. Let's see. So we can invoke despair plus extract the truth. Um, hmm. That doesn't seem very good. We can do this. Alternatively, we can just get Professor Onyx kind of going here. And I actually think that's probably the best play. No, you know what? Actually, let's Lolf. Uh, let's go ahead and drop the two creatures here. We're just going to spread this out as best we can so it makes it a little bit trickier. Uh, Extract the Truth doesn't hit anything at the moment, so it's only Creature, Enchantment, or Planeswalker, and they have none of those in hand, so that's kind of where that isn't a good play. Um, but this sets up a Planeswalker Avenue plus the Creature Avenue, so like they're basically going to have to have a Sweeper, like a Farewell, or something to deal with both. Ooh, excuse me, I burped there. Something to deal with both. Doomscar just deals with the creatures, which is fine by me. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so that doesn't hit anything. Uh, I think we'll just end up playing this for the land side here. Uh, let's draw. Okay. Uh, let's get their hand out of there. There's kind of no reason not to do this, I feel like. We're basically going to get them into top deck mode, uh, which seems pretty reasonable. And we also get to exile their graveyard. So that's all of that gone. And they're back down to basically nothing. And there is the concession. We did it. That's why Go Blink, I think, is so good. Uh, that was really, really awesome. Heck yeah, guys. We got the win. Let's move on to game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we keep this, I think. 
We do have a turn one duress, which is quite nice, uh, just in case. And then, of course, Meat Hook Massacre later on. So I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, we do have the Aghanim's Awakening, which we'll probably just play as a... Wow. <laughs> well, let's just take the rune. Um, we'll probably just play as a land here. Uh, this is fascinating. So they kept a very not great hand, in my opinion. Um, we'll let that sit. If they play any creature, we just Blood Chief's Thirst, they will probably not be able to deal with the Graveyard Trespasser, um, which is fascinating and really good because we actually just get to exile this rune right away. Um, so they can't get that back with a Runeforge Champion or anything. They do have Showdown, which is a little scary, uh, but I think it was correct to get that rune out of the hand first. Uh, so this is fine. We just get to kill it next turn. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, this is totally fine. Um, so first things first. Uh, actually, that was a mistake. We should have killed that first, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and exile this. Okay. Um, my thought was uh, if they, they weren't going to block, there was no way in the world they would have blocked. So... Yeah, that was kind of a mistake. We could have exiled this and gained a life, but that's fine. Uh, I assume they just show down this turn. No? Okay. And then they can hit it with a Rune of Might. Seems pretty reasonable. If they would like. They might try and leave up the Seat of the Empire here, though. Uh, which, if they do, I'm kind of cool with. No, okay, they are going to Rune it. I thought so. I figured they would. That's good. All right, uh, well, we're gonna have some options. I'm, I'm very, this is a very interesting matchup because, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, the Naya runes deck is a very powerful one and one that you have to consider when you're playing any standard game. Um, but I'm very curious to see how this goes. Okay, let's attack in. We'll go ahead and exile the Runeforge champion. I expect they won't block. And then I'm just going to throw this out for two and get rid of this generous visitor. Cool. So now, again, I assume they're going to probably show down, uh, get a land off of it, and that might be it for the turn, in which case we get to loth into a hopefully relatively empty board and then start exiling more runes from the graveyard. They did not play the showdown. So maybe they've got something else. They do. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say, there's no way they would have done that otherwise, so, uh, cool. If we get, like, an Invoke Despair, I will be stoked. Very, very stoked. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, they've got two mana available, and it's a Rune of my or a Rune of Speed, excuse me. Uh, curious if they attack. They do. Fascinating. Okay. All right, so nothing that is like super great there, but that is okay. Let's go ahead and attack in. Uh, I'm gonna take the rune here. Again, just eliminating future plays is kind of the goal. And we will just go ahead and drop the two, two ones, just so we can double block here if need be. If they don't have more runes, we're in okay shape. If they do, it's not great for us, but uh, here they're gonna get some more, it looks like, yeah. Ooh, touch the spirit realm. That's a little scary for sure. Um, cool. Well, we'll see. They have not left up the seat of the empire like at all, which is kind of fascinating to me, but I guess kind of makes sense. I don't know. They must be out of runes in hand, I would imagine. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. So now they can touch the spirit realm on something. Be curious to know what. Uh, I assume they put the counter there. Yeah. So if they take a token, we would never... I, I mean, we can't really block. If they target this, they have to discard a card. So this is kind of fine. And they discard a commune. Okay. So if they attack, we block. And they did not attack. Fascinating. All right, so let's do this. Let's see what we get. Hopefully something. <laughs> A graveyard trespasser. All right. Let's play it. 
We'll go ahead and take the generous visitor. At least we gain a life out of that transaction. And then here we just have to pass, sadly. I think they definitely are going to... Uh, we've kind of flooded a little bit on lands here, um, which isn't ideal, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah, so they get to throw a ton of 1-1 counters around here. Uh, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. So if they get two more counters, we can still kill, but that's it. Uh, and they have a rune of speed, so chances are that's not gonna happen. Hollowed haunting, terrifying. Oh my gosh, is this terrifying. Okay, well, yeah, this naturalist is gonna get massive. We absolutely need a removal spell. Um, and I'm not sure the best way we're gonna be able to get that, because my assumption is they're gonna kill Loth. A blood on the snow would be great. Um, any point and shoot removal spell would be perfectly fine. Um, discard is not good anymore. Inscription of ruin would be fine because that would kill the the naturalist. Um, yeah, this is this is tricky. <laughs> so that's officially out of range for us to kill it, and it has flying. All right, so basically, yeah, we just need like a blood on the snow would be ideal. They can kill Loth here if they like. Hmm. I mean, we know their hand, uh, so I guess there's a positive there? Uh, not really. We're pretty dead. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I think we put up a pretty hard-fought battle. I think if we just draw a removal spell, we're okay. But, like, you know, at least semi-okay. So they're being very clever and putting more counters on the visitor now, which is definitely the way to go. That naturalist is already big enough. They don't really need to worry about it. Um, if they attack with the visitor, we can double block it with the tokens. And they are out of mana. Wow, they're just going straight for Loth. Uh, in that case, we just let Loth die. I'm kind of surprised they didn't just go for us. 11 damage is pretty hefty. That's really bad. Um, I mean, I guess we play it, but we're pretty dead here. We get a card out of hand, <laughs> which is, I guess, relevant-ish. But yeah, we're we're pretty dead here, unfortunately. They get to add more one-one counters onto stuff. They've got the hollowed haunting. I think we can probably just, yeah, I'm gonna good game them here. All right, let's move into a game three, guys. We're gonna be pushing time a little bit, but let's see if we can do it. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. Definitely gonna be our last game, and I'll keep this. I mean, it's Elder Fang into Graveyard Trespasser, into Soren, and then hopefully Invoke Despair. Like, this is a beautiful curve if we can get some more lands, uh, which is generally not too difficult. There's one right there. So now we're up to at least Soren. Discarding a card here is nice. It just gives us some fodder for the Trespasser as well. Um, Looks like this is going to be a Disturbed deck, which is a little annoying, for sure. Um, but we'll see what we can do. Snow deck as well. So I'm assuming they've got fight spells. They're going to Portable Hole on an Elder Fang Disciple when they have a 1-1 one, one First Striker on the field. Maybe would have left that one alone, but that's fine. Uh, that's actually a really good draw. Um, this is also very nice. We can go ahead and get this out of the graveyard so they can't do anything about it. Uh, or, excuse me, Disturb it back out. So, yeah, this seems pretty solid-ish. We'll see how things go. Um, really happy to have the blood on the snow, honestly. It just gives us a way later on to, like, deal with any of the creatures, or hopefully all of the creatures that they play. Um, the Invoked Despair could be kind of nice. We'll see. Elite Spellbinder, huh? Well, this is a tricky one, because honestly, all of the cards in our hand are pretty relevant. <laughs> So, not really sure what they're going to take. It looks like Invoke Despair, which is kind of surprising, given we have Soren coming down this upcoming turn. But maybe they've got something in their hand to deal with Soren. I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead and throw the token out there. Uh, do I attack? Uh, no, I don't think I do. I don't see a huge reason to. If they deal with the 2-3, they can certainly kill Soren, which is like fine. I don't really care that much. Intrepid Adversary, they're gonna plus up, I assume. 
And this is fine still too. Okay. Land is good. Land is very good. Um, let's go ahead and plus up. <laughs> wow. Um, that's a lot of damage. Um, yeah, screw it. We're going to do it. <laughs> that's a lot, but we're going to try. Uh, so we could play this out uh, as the lantern. Or we could just play an Elder Fang Disciple. Um, I'm gonna just play the Elder Fang Disciple here. Let's get another card out of hand. Uh, this could be really bad for us depending on what it is that they get. Okay. And what's in their graveyard? Nothing too crazy yet. I'll uh, I'll just hold back. We're kind of shields up at the moment. Um, part of the reason, by the way, I accepted the Turgrid damage is because if we get one more land, we're in great shape uh, because now all of a sudden we kill our whole board, sure, but then we can get something back and they... Oh, okay. Well, that's really terrible. Um, interesting. So now it could just be that they kill Blood on the Snow. Yeah. Okay. Not kill it, but make it difficult to play. Um, certainly not ideal, but... All right. I mean, I think we just play Turgrid out here, and then we'll just do this. Alright. Here's to hoping. Um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if we draw one more land, we're doing okay. They kill Turgrid. That's annoying for sure. Okay. There's the land. That's really good. Um... Let's see what's off the top here as well. I'm actually going to reveal this. Uh, no, no, no. Cancel, cancel, cancel. All right. Let's go ahead and just invoke despair. Um, all right. Well, we get to kill a bunch of stuff, so that's good. Uh, I'm curious to see... Okay, so they do discard that. That makes sense. Get another Invoke Despair. That's very good. Um, I'm going to attack here so we can get this off of there. Um, and if they want to block, that's fine. Yeah. So they're going to sacrifice theirs. That makes total sense. That's fine. Um, but we're still in a much better board position, I think, than they are long term. So especially with that draw, that's not good. Uh, for them. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is reasonable enough. Wow. Oops. There we go. And yeah, I'm going to block all of it because we do have Invoke Despair that can kill this afterwards. So we also gain life out of this whole transaction. So that's just good for us. Um, we'll do this first. If it's a land, great. We'll decline that. That's fine. Let's go ahead and invoke despair. Get that adversary out of there. And yeah. I guess we'll just go ahead and draw two. There's not really a reason not to. We're not a super like instant speed focused deck. So I don't really mind doing that main phase. If that makes sense. That's fine. Um... Excellent. All right. Uh, now we're kind of back into our normal position. We're going to shields up a little bit here. And yeah, theoretically, we should be pretty, pretty reasonably well set up at this point. This really doesn't matter. Uh, they can take whatever they want. It doesn't matter. Um, both of these cards are relatively dead, um, given that they don't have any enchantments on the field or cards in hand. So... Uh, I guess first things first, let's do this. I'll happily reveal that. We'll go ahead and play it. Um, I'm going to attack in. They're not going to block. Wow. Uh, interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and destroy all creatures. Excellent. Um, 
We'll grab Turgrid, I think. Awesome. All right. I'm feeling pretty good. And there it is, guys. We got the win. That is two and one, I believe, is the final record. Not bad. Let's talk about this deck. All right, guys. So again, I just want to reiterate before I talk about this in too much detail, this is very much a test version of my own discard deck. So a lot of these cards you'll notice, you know, you probably noticed in the deck tech, there's a lot of two ofs and things like that. I would definitely be swapping some stuff around here. However, I really like the deck. I thought it went out, I mean, relatively well. Excuse me. Uh, two out of three wins is not bad. The loss was obviously to Naya Runes. I think that's not uncommon, um, but I do think we have the answers to it. We just maybe don't have enough or we just didn't draw them. I mean, that's that's okay too. Um, we do have a lot of opportunity to draw cards off of things like Soren, off of Loth, even off of, um, excuse me, off of uh, Professor Onyx. So we've got a lot of ways to draw further into the deck, which is why I didn't go quite so heavy on the sweepers. We just didn't draw it and you know, it's okay. Um, Regardless, I really like the deck. I think it worked very, very well overall. Uh, again, with swapping a couple of cards around, I feel like it'd be in a much better position. Uh, but I love the Graveyard Trespasser, an absolute all-star in my opinion, uh, along with a lot of these discard outlets, just makes it really tricky for your opponent to really be able to do anything. And then exiling the Graveyard with Go Blinks as well as the Trespasser just allows you to really take apart a lot of decks right now. So for me, great awesome deck really enjoyed playing this one and i hope you guys enjoyed it i do really appreciate everybody watching and supporting the channel it's been an absolute pleasure to bring you gameplay videos literally every day and i hope we'll continue that for a long long time so thank you guys so much i really do appreciate it thank you so much for watching i'll see you later